picture books by by literally the the implication of their name um, seems to make young people think that they're baby stories. Picture books are not. If you think about it, a picture book does exactly what a novel does that takes 600 pages, and picture books do it in 32 or 48 by multiples, all by multiples of eight. But picture books absolutely encapsulate incidents and the telling in rich language. But, but besides that, I think the illustration adds another element of richness to this. I mean, maybe because I'm an artist, but I was always a visual kid. And when somebody is telling me a story, it would just add another dimension, as if I could see a picture that represented what they're talking about. I, I'm always interested to hear people say, well, I, I haven't read to my kids since they were seven. I want to be read to now, and I'm 67. There is something amazing about being read to. When you're a child, what I loved was sitting in a loved one's lap, and I would put my ear right next to their breastbone, and their voice would just literally wash through me, and I would become the story, and they'd hold the book in front of me, and just, I mean, just the, the beauty of being so close to their bodies and being part of their voice and part of the voice of the story. And then looking at those pictures, both of us mentally went to a place together. We weren't here anymore. Every day, every night, every occasion of my life, this is what happened. And I think because of that, I became visual and I also became a person who writes stories, certainly tell stories. Um, vital, vital, vital. There's just, I cannot de describe the feeling of closeness. And I believe even your teenagers, you'll notice, you think, oh, they, they wouldn't sit and listen to a story. Have you ever tried it? You know, I have a lot of friends who bring over their preteen and teenage friends. And after dinner, because we have rousing, raucous dinners, and we argue till the veins are out on our face, and opera is going on the radio, and oh, we just have a fabulous time. And the kids sometimes will go into another room, usually to watch a football game or something. But then we older people start sitting there talking about our families, and talking about how times were, and laughing, and relating incidents of history as we knew it, one by one, these uninterested, contemptible teenagers who, who just act like, oh, they'd rather be, have a root canal than be there, will come back into that room, I promise you. And they sit down, and the, literally the tension goes out of their shoulders, and they sit and listen with absolute interest. They want to know how things were before they came here because you paved the way for them. Plus, I think it's an amazing teaching tool to tell your kids where the potholes are in the road. Avoid them. That's what wonderful books do. They're kind of paving the way so that person knows what to expect, what to avoid, what to strive for. So, oh my yes, I think storytelling and reading to a kid is essential. And uh, even in, in, you know, elderly homes, we occasionally go into some of the homes of the elderly. Rest homes, I guess you'd call them. I guess they call them retire, what do they call them, retirement homes. But they love to be read to. I don't think any human, no matter how old they are, don't want to be read to. So keep reading. And you might discover there are some books that you've never read before that you're going to fall in love with along with your kid.